Hello, everyone. My name is Suming Pon from Kankok University in Chungju. My presentation today is about hangout culture in Korea. And before that, let me show you just some picture. This picture shows the crime index of each country. And as you can see in the picture, the crime rate in Korea is on the low side. As a result, Koreans have no fear of playing until late at night. And I would like to say that hangout culture has been able to develop. Today's presentation consists of three main categories. <clears throat> First, I would like to talk about the <clears throat> security of Korea as I, as I did. And now I'm going to tell you about the hangout of Koreans of men. The first, I'll explain about men's hobbies. The PC room, I think you all know that the internet in Korea is good. I think all young men in Korea have been to PC room at least once. But the word PC room was not the same as same as now. There were many people smoking in their seats and the lighting itself was dark. <clears throat> so it was not a pleasant atmosphere, but it's different these days. These days, our PC room has reached a level called PC Cafe with bright lights, pleasant air, and separate smoking rooms. I think the price is also about uh, $1 per hour, which is a good cost effectiveness. And second, the billiard room. Like PC room, billiard room has changed cleanly and comfortably these days, although they were not as pleasant as they are now. Also, I think the price is pretty cheap, about $15 an hour. <clears throat> and I will explain about girls' hobbies. First, it is a cafe. Women usually spend time chatting with their friends. So I think a cafe is the best place. There are so many cafes in Korea. And these days, the cafe itself is being decorated in an emotional and atmospheric way, aiming at the part where the generation likes to upload photos on social network service, which is constantly attracting the younger generation. I recommended going to Iksandong Cafe Street, Hanok, a traditional Korean architecture and a cafe are combined to form a Hanok Cafe Street. And I think it's really beautiful. Second is shopping. Girls like to shop and nowadays most shopping malls in Korea are shopping centers and almost everything including cafe, restaurant, or movie theaters can be served inside the shopping mall. The picture next to it is a shopping mall called the Da Hyundae. And as you can see, there are many people who go to take pictures because the interior is beautiful. Finally, common hobby. For, uh, first, I will explain the singing room. There are two types of singing room in Korea. First, uh, normally karaoke style and the second is kind of coin style when where you can insert coins and sing several songs today i'm going to explain about coin, coin singing room coin singing rooms in korea can sing three to four songs per dollar the people who visit this place are very diverse from students to adults and there are many people who visit this place, especially for killing time. Secondly, the theater. Movies cannot be left out in Korean culture life. Although I, we couldn't go to the movie theater for a while during the COVID-19 era. Many people are visiting the movie theater again these days. The price is, price is reasonable at around 14 to 15 per movie. And especially many people go to the movie theater on a dating course for lovers. 
Lastly, is is alcohol. Korean really like alcohol, and accordingly, the drink culture has developed a lot. Bar is not enough to open until done, and many places operate until the first bus run in the morning. This caused many accidents, but even so, Koreans drink a lot and enjoy it. Before I finish my presentation, I would like to introduce you to a good place to take picture as a local. It is pop-up store called Common Ground near Kankuk University in Seoul, and it is design is beautiful and many people visit it. Like the person in this picture, everyone usually takes picture like this. Thank you for listening to the presentation so far, and I would appreciate if you could ask me any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Sunmin, and oh, I, I, excellent. And we'll we'll get those questions uh, toward. Uh, and now, JJ, go ahead, move on to uh, our next one. But Sunmin, I really appreciate that. It's really interesting. The uh, last that location next to Gongguk in Seoul, the capital city of South Korea, it looks like an interesting place to visit. And uh, seeing these similarities and differences, uh, I think uh, between uh, our two different universities. All right, JJ, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Okay, great. Thank you, JJ. Yeah, uh, and if you don't mind, if you if your camera is working, it's always more fun. I like the, it's always an extra level of media. Uh, go ahead and begin when you're ready, JJ. I'm having difficulties opening up my PowerPoint, so I think Tay will go first, and I'll try to figure this out. Absolutely, no problem. Tay, are you there? Okay, go ahead. Hey, I'm ready. Yeah. Can you hear me and can you see me? Okay. Can you watch my PPT? Mm -hmm. Looks good. Okay. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Taeyong Kim, the presenter. Nice to meet you, everyone. Okay. First time, I have one question for everybody. What is your favorite Korean contents? You have done yet? Uh, I would say the stadium in the bottom left looks interesting. Uh, stadium? Yes, right. There is a DDP code. Yeah, stadium is for best content. And tourism, scenery, sculpture, food, Korean culture among them. It's a fantastic all of all of the contents in Korea. I'm going to present about Korean entertainment. That's right. My topic is Korean entertainment. Okay. There are so many famous entertainments in Korea. Among them, we have prepared contents that are popular these days with a lot of interest. So I think it would be good to focus on it and explain experience it later. I just recommend. Okay, first, I will introduce Korean dramas. Korean dramas are very interesting and famous all over the world. These days, the OTT service has developed a lot. So many dramas are loved by many people throughout Netflix, which you know a lot. Serena Uyangu, 25-21 drama, is there anyone who watches this drama or knows about it? Uh, and the, do you know this the drama? Lawyer, the, the lawyer, the top right lawyer. Uh, Yao lawyer. Sa Yang -ho, Yang -ho. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everyone Sun highly recommend. Lawyer, yeah. Okay. I recommended you to watch them every K dramas. Dramas are good, but these days, there are so many love-related programs, and they are popular in Korea. Among them, I recommended Transfer Dating Season 2. It is a program. Yes, this program. This program it is a program where ex-girlfriends appear and live together and find new lovers. I recommend it because, of, because it's the most loved pieces of the, this season. Okay, the second is a festival in 
Korean. What comes to mind first when you think of Korea is a K-pop. Don't you think it would be fun to imagine a festival with K-pop singers? Yes. First, uh, it's a water bomb. Yes, this festival name is water bomb. It is a festival where various singers participated, participate and enjoy playing with water bombs and water guns. It's the okay, it's very fantastic festival in Korea. Okay, next festival is a Hunbok Show. Hunbok Show, it is a Hunbok Show is a festival. Oh no, no. Hunbok Show. Do you know Sai? Do you know Sai? Yeah. Sai very popular people in person in Korea. I think everyone knows well about the song Gangnam Style. Okay. Sai's Hunbok Show is a history of Korean fe festival, history of Republic of Korea festival. It is a festival where a huge competitive rate of ticketing, ticketing and a large number of people gather every year to enjoy it. It is a festival was until down and the audience wants to send it home. Please I I just want, I want to go home. I will show you the Humboksha video. Yeah, this thing is a uh, Gangnam style. Yeah. Yeah. The bit the video uh, I participated in this season book show. Don't you don't you find uh, don't you find it interesting just by watching video? I really want to recommend this festival to everyone. Okay, the third one is a photo booth. Currently, Korea has many photobooths in famous streets and neighborhoods since the last year. This is because you can make pretty memories by printing pretty pictures with your precious pre friends at a low price using the photobooths. I also take pictures with my friends when I play with them. There, these are the pictures that my friends and I took. There are more pictures in my house, but that my friends and I take I took, there are more pictures besides this, but they are not included in the PPT. So I selected just the 10 picture of no date. If you come to Korea with your friends, it would be nice to visit the photo booth with your friends and make a uh, Christian memories by take a photo, photo in photo booth. Okay. Before the last content, I will ask you a question. And an important anniversary co is coming up. Do you happen to know? Do you know, Daniel? It's a coming up anniversary. Uh, Christmas? <laughs> Thanksgiving? Oh, just right. <laughs> yeah, know. that's right. It's Christmas. Yes, thank you, Daniel. Uh, Korea decorates Christmas trees and sculpture at the end of the season year. Why don't you visit this pretty Christmas tree and sculpture and take pictures? I was visit with my girlfriend every year and leave Christmas memories. It's just beautiful sculpture, trees, Christmas tree, and each season. Okay, well, lastly, it's the Queen Eitan. Raise your hand if you have any question for me. Uh, and we will do questions and please there's a I believe a q a box so feel free to write questions now uh, down and we can come back to them at the end of uh, all of the uh presentations on our side tay appreciate that wonderful thank you so much uh, uh, okay thank you for listening to the presentation so far mm, mm. and i need to get out of chungju more and visit some of these places jj are you ready or we can go to silas Oh, uh, okay, JJ, JJ ready, but JJ used to Silo's computer, okay, so, so. <laughs> Silo's account to present, right? That's teamwork. We'll just go with JJ right now, and then we can uh, knock Silas out after that. And um, Great teamwork, guys. Uh, and again, thank you uh, for participating, everyone. I really appreciate that and see all of your uh, 
names here and uh, especially uh, my guys over here, my students who are watching, very grateful. And okay, JJ, talking about, I'll let you get to that. Can, can you hear me? Can, but I want to see you if you can get the um, uh, camera on. And it, there you go, it's Silas, but it is JJ, not Silas. Okay. Yeah, I'll start my presentation. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Jay Jin Lee, but you can just call me JJ. Uh, I'm a sophomore studying English literature and culture at Congo University. And I wanted to talk to you about Jeju Island today because this is where I live when I'm not in school. And I think it will be a very interesting topic for you guys. So Jeju is known as South Korean Hawaii. And my presentation will be uh, in seven parts. And first I'll tell you a little about Jeju Island. So Jeju though is located in the most uh, southern part of South Korea, which I circled in red. And it only takes about one hour from Seoul Kimpo International Airport to arrive at Jeju Island. And I'll uh, talk about Jeju, uh, divided into North Coast, Southern Coast, and East Coast and West Coast. And first let's, talk about the North Coast. I brought some uh, famous uh, tourist attractions for you and some pictures to show what it's like. This is, Do sorry, this is Dodudong Rainbow Coastal Road. It is near to the Jeju International Airport. And as you can see, there are blocks uh, along the coast and it's in rainbow colors. And you can take uh, beautiful pictures here. And also, uh, it's, very, it's very near to the airport. So you can take pictures like it's on the, down on the right. And it will be really fun if you could visit here. And moving on, uh, there is Dongmun Traditional Market. It's a traditional market where you can shop for local produce, souvenir, and sample some snacks and food. It is very well organized and divided into rows for fruits, meats, seafood, and other stuff as well. And next is Yongduam Rock. Yongduam means dragon's head. And it is a very popular sightseeing scene to see volcanoes rock formation. It is easily accessed by public transport with car park to center to visitors. The shape looks like a dragon's head, if you see here. And it's created by strong winds and waves over thousands of years. And now let's move on to the South Coast tourist attractions. There are three uh, famous falls in Jeju Island, but I only brought the two that I've visited before. So Jongbang Fall is the only fall, waterfall in Asia to fall directly into the ocean. Uh, it is one of the most visited uh, attractions on Jeju Island. And next, there is the Chunjian Falls. It's also known as the Pond of the God, uh, which derives from the legend that seven fairies ser serving the King of Heaven came down to the pond and bathe it in the waters. You can also take a glimpse of tropical nature by taking a relaxing stroll at the one kilometer walking path here. Now is Depo Chusangjeolli and Wedulge Rock. Uh, if you see on the left, Chusangjeolli uh, means uh, volcanic uh, cliff. And the eruption of Mount Kalasan formed this site here. And you can walk to the 
platform to see the beautiful cliff. There are various shapes such as pillar, hexagons, and cube rocks with blue water keep crashing on the rock. And on the right, it's a rock formation that rose above the sea because of the volcanic activities. It's, it was also in the drama, Korean drama, Jewel in the Palace. So many Korean drama fans come here to take pictures and see the drama site for themselves. And there are also many flowers that are famous in Jeju Island, which is canola flowers in, in the Jungmun area. And there are also tulips in Sangyeongwon, which is a botanic garden that is located in the southern part of Jeju. And let's go to the west coast. Uh, as some of you might know, Jeju is very famous for its green tea fields and also Halabon, which I'll talk about later. Uh, there is also Lok tea field and museum here. A lot of people visit this place to experience Korean tea culture and try on different types of tea in the Osolo Tea Museum. On the right, there's Innisfree Jeju House. Innisfree is a Korean cosmetic brand. And here you can make your own soap, uh, own soap and try on the cosmetic items here. And next is Sangbangsang. This is also one of the most uh, visited tourist attractions in Jeju Island. <clears throat> it is believed to be formed by the volcanic lava from Mount Halasan. It is a great place for a photo, a stunning view of a town and ocean. <clears throat> Sorry. And Jeju is, Jeju has a humid and tropical weather. So as you can see, you can see some palm trees in front of the Sambongsan mountain. And next is Yongmori Coast. It's also known as the Dragon Head Cliff and is a rocky coastline where Mount Sangpangsan stretches into the ocean. And like pictures that I have on my screen, the volcanic uh, eruption has caused this. And there are many uh, tourist attractions like this in Jeju as well. Now moving on to the East Coast. Songsan Yilchulbong is one of my favorite, favorite places to go to in Jeju Island. Uh, it is one of the most recognizable landmarks in Jeju. It has been selected as the UNESCO Heritage Site. And I, yes, and it, it is also known as the Sunrise Peak. And it is the best place for its incredible sunlight views like picture on the left. A lot of people visit this place on New Year to see the sunrise. Next is Manjangur Lava Cave. Uh, Jeju is also well known for its natural monuments and for geographic features like this. I think visiting this cave is indeed a unique experience for people, not only in Korea, but also Outside, I I have heard that this cave is the longest cave that have been caused by uh, lava in the world, and this has also been selected as the UNESCO heritage site. And there is Subchikoji Coast. This is also my favorite place to go to in Jeju Island. It's located in the eastern shore and it has a beautiful coastal area with cliff and lighthouse. It is famous for K-pop fans as its appearance in Korean television dramas are quite, they, it comes out quite often in Korean dramas. And next I'll give you some travel tips while you're tra traveling in Jeju Island. Uh, renting a car is the best way to travel around in Jeju Island because 
There is public transportation like bus and taxi, but the buses won't take you to every places and you will have to walk very long time. And second, if you can rent a car, I recommend that you use neighbor map application. It has English navigation system available and it shows you exactly how many minutes it takes and how many minutes there are left for the next bus to come. And third, Jeju's weather is fickle, it changes a lot. So I recommend that you prepare for the changing weather. If you're going in the winter, I recommend that you pack some more warm clothes. If you're going in the summertime, I recommend you bring an umbrella. And fourth tip is that I want you to plan for at least three days because I think three days is not, less than three days is not enough to see a lot of parts of Jeju Island. And fifth, I recommend that you eat anything that has green tea and halabong in its name. Halabong is a Jeju tangerine that only grows here. And all the desserts and drinks made of these two items are very good. And this is a video that I've made uh, for my class, other class. It's a vlog and I will put it on for you guys to watch. Is it four minutes long, JJ? Uh, maybe I'll could, just go to the favorite part, and this is terrific okay. timing. And we have uh, we have our last presenter coming up, and uh, excellent. What's your favorite part in this video? Looks great. I want to link to it. We can watch it. Is this on your YouTube channel? Yes, this is on my YouTube channel. Ah. So I usually eat a lot of seafood in Jeju Island, and. This is one of my favorite cafe in Jeju Island, and I really recommend that you visit many beautiful cafes in Korea. Do you have an image of your uh, your family's restaurant? Uh, no, I don't have my uh, image right now. Ah. Well. Excellent, and we'll got uh, we have our we have time for our final uh, presenter, Silas JJ. Thank you. This was uh, extremely uh, insightful towards Jeju Do, uh, the Hawaii of South Korea. It is a neat place that you can rent a car and you can get you can check out. I I've, I've been there. I need to go back. I don't think I've seen any. I think those are all uh, like you get to those different beaches and the lava cave. Uh, wow, uh, I I appreciate that. So I uh, appreciate that. And thank you, JJ. And I want to watch that video yeah. next week uh, or this okay, Wednesday. Thank you so much. I really everyone. appreciate that. Uh, and um, okay, Silas. Can I see? Uh huh. We have uh, the, there we go. Okay. Uh, hi, guys. My name is Silas, and I'm from. Kongu University and our presentation about the Korean internet culture. So out of my outline, first is what is internet culture? And second is what are popular internet service in Korea? And third, why is Korean internet is so fast? And fourth is internet's negative things. And the last chapter is the other side of internet. First, what is the internet culture? Uh, internet culture or cyber culture is a culture based on many, many space stations of computer networks and, and their use for communication and entertainment, business and recreation. Some features of internet culture include online communities and gaming and social media. So, oh, oh, sorry. So, what are popular internet service in Korea? Yes. The first thing is Kakao. And 
Kakao is that free messenger application and it is only free text and free call. Yeah. It is Kakao and you can we can say it as a as a kato. And it's a free messenger application for smartphones that has the free text and free call. So we we can use it free in Korea and Saudi, you can use it for free. Yeah. This is the most famous app in Korea. The second thing is neighbor. Neighbor is the app, is searching app. And it is a South Korea online platform and it made by 1999. It is the world's first operator to introduce the comprehensive search feature. Yeah. The next uh, famous internet website is G Market. G Market is the e-commerce website and the company was founded in 2000 as a subsidiary of Interpark and was acquired by eBay in 2009. Yeah. You can understand it as a Amazon like that. So what is the, why is Korean internet so fast? So here is some five things that I organized from Korea internet, why Korea internet is so fast. The first thing is government investment and second is education, third is MS office typing skills, fourth is infrastructure, last thing is PC bank cafe. Yeah. You can see the South Korea and Japan is the top internet speed ranking in the world. Yeah. So first things, uh, the government, the government investment. The Korean government has been pushing IT as a core industry since the early 1990s. They invest in both infrastructure and education. So this is the first thing. And second thing is that MS Office and typing skills. Most Koreans are learning computing skills as an elementary school. Yeah, we we have computer room in the school, and this is the, the legal uh, communication and school lecture in Korean elementary school and the elementary school. So we learn about typing skills with fast typing about English and Hangul and HWSW understands about that. And MS Office is also we learning from Korea education system. The third is infrastructure. Yeah, Korea made high speed cable connection with LG and Samsung. LG and Samsung is the most famous core or the most famous Korea. A company in Korea, and they serve high-speed cables in everywhere in Korea. And also, Korea has a high population density city density because Korea has small, a uh, small village and small town. So it can be possible when Korea government need to serve high-speed cables, and Korea became has a high high-speed cables with high population density. The last thing is stay PC bank and cafe. Yeah. Stay low and gave consumer to use computer as a low price is the first thing about cafe and PC bank. Others using fee 0 0.86 US dollar is hour in one hour in Korea. Yeah, it is very cheap prices. Yeah. Also, gaming culture health helps about we can be a most Fast internet in Korea. Yeah. So the next things internet internet negative effects. Yeah. So first thing is lack lack of sleep, and second could be linked to depression. Third causes FOMO, fear of missing out, and fourth is Kelly to self esteem. The first thing, lack of sleep. Uh, social media can be addictive without us releasing it. Very often, you decide to check your social media accounts for just 10 minutes before bed, but you know, it two hours has passed. Yeah, this is a common problem among young adults and teenagers, resulting in as a lack of sleep.
Second thing is could be linked to depression. Also not confirmed. Some students have shown that people who spend too much time online also show how to symptoms of depression. However, on the flip side, it is possible that these individuals are already satisfied or suffered from depression, which is what causes them to spend more time online. Further research is required in this area to understand the correlation better. The third reason is FOMO, yeah, fear of missing out. For fear of missing out, more commonly known as FOMO, has become a much more serious problem since the onset of social media. Yeah, the anxiety was caused because uh, the indi the individual felt that they would miss out on something, or like an interesting piece of news or an event if they if didn't re regularly check their phones. The irony, however, is that the more time people spend online, the more likely they are to miss out of life events. So, so last religion is low self-esteem. So it is more, it is similar with FOMO. Yeah. In this internet, there are so many nice pictures and nice things. Uh, we can compare everything in, in, in internet. So it can be, it could be linked with low self-esteem. Yeah. So like that feeling eagle to please or feeling self-conscious or compare with others. Yeah. Oh, so this is the negative things in internet about four things. Yeah. But the, the other side, all the advantage of internet is also exist. Yeah. You can find information in internet and you can find you can see other culture or other internet services. You can use everything in online. So we can connect because we can use internet in this webinar. We can use with in internet so we can meet in the midnight and also we can share our culture and some study and some meanings with yours in this webinar. It is also advantages of, of internet. Yes. So my point is that we can use internet wisely. We have to use internet wisely. We have to choose our good topics and good information skills and not illegal things, just choose legal things and just choose some um, safety memories, safety, safety information, and don't see other illegal things and disadvantaged these things. Yeah. Uh, we just share, compare, not comparing others. We just see and feel or experience other culture with internet. Yeah. So we can connect the world with internet. All. So, so this is my presentation. And, and thanks for my listening my presentation thank you everybody uh great work thank you so much yes silas the internet as uh something digital literacy south korea that takes puts a lot of money into uh and okay so now that call uh that's what we have here for today on our side uh looking forward to your presentations over there dina eagerly anticipating uh, until uh, before then, though, we have 10 minutes uh, for pause for any questions. Uh, now, please, um, uh, uh, we can we can we can hold off until the very end uh, for some more. Uh, I probably will uh, maybe have a few at the very end. But but anybody, uh, do we have any any questions uh, about? OK. Uh, we have time now for questions. Mm -hmm. So I have a hand up here among the panelists. Uh, from Ms. Nasra, please go ahead. Hi, I had a question for, um, I think, was it Sun Min that did the uh, Jeju Island? That was JJ. Oh, JJ, mm -hmm. okay. I was curious if the, you know, the uh, Jeju is famous for those female divers, the older ladies, do they still do that? I can't remember the name, it's Han something. Oh, uh, yes, it's, they, the women are called Henya. And there are still uh, many Henyas in Jeju Island. 
and you can also have experience of doing it yourself after learning it a bit. And it's a really nice experience trying uh, to dive into the seas and getting something from the ocean. It's going to be fun. Excellent. Um, by the way, for panelists, you can write your questions in the chat and we can see it there because I know that you don't have access to the Q&A. And for the attendees, you can write your questions in the, Q in the Q&A and we will answer these questions. We will address them. I have a couple of questions until people start writing their questions, if you don't mind. For JJ, I mean, I love Juju Island. Am I pronouncing it right? Juju Island? I, I like your way of saying it, Dina. <laughs> How do you say that, JJ? It's Jeju, Jeju, do, Jeju okay. Island. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. And I, I want to ask you, I mean, in terms of the... Um, the tourism in South Korea, how many people or how many, what's the percentage of the tourists that visit the island or it's not as popular? And this is why maybe it's still as beautiful. Do you have a high number of tourists coming to the island or not? Uh, there are a high numbers of tourists coming to Jeju Island. It has increased from Last year, about 22.2%. Uh, for the exact numbers, I think it's uh, twelve million people last year. Wow. Wow. Okay, fine. All right. Because the, at the beginning, you think that there will be few tourists because it's a small island, but uh, it is amazing. So yes, I wanted to know how many tourists visit the island. Uh, thank you so much. Um, for Silas, if I'm saying it right again, um, I have two questions. Number one, you talked about neighbor, if I'm pronouncing it right again. Uh, how is this different than Google? Silas, is it? Oh, yeah. You, you talked about search engine as far as I understand, and it was N A V E R. Oh, yeah. So I wanted to know how different it is from Google. Um, okay. Uh, neighbor is the online platform operated by Neighbor Corporation. And you know, uh, Neighbor is the first operator to introduce the comprehensive search feature. You can understand? Which complies search results from various categories and presents them in a single page. Yeah. Um, uh, I, see. I get. I want to say, Dina, though, it has more, I think, culturally connected idea, like culturally connected uh, re results. So it picks up like they don't use Google Translate as much as they use the Papa Go, neighbor Papa Go. And it's because it has a way of just uh, the, the AI is trained on, I think, the Hangul. And there's a lot more uh, uh, their language, Korean language that feeds into that search engine. So the searches are really specific. So if you're asking for advice, it would feed in all of the, the uh, comments or feeds from uh, other Korean users using Hangul. So I, I, from what I hear, but there's also a pride element. I feel like there's some sort of like Korean pride with that. That's a, a I'm sorry, Silas too. Uh, uh, but uh, anyway, that's, and yes, it's a, it's really good for Korean searches. Mm. I see. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I have another question. Um, uh, about the the downside of uh, um, using the internet, uh, is uh, do you think that among the young people, I mean, uh, young adults, this is very common, or uh, no older ages, or because you said that the internet is so fast in South Korea, so uh, are, are, I mean, are there any programs to uh, raise awareness about these issues in the country? Any programs to uh, raise awareness to make sure that people know about these side effects and 
how to handle them? Handle them. Um, I know we have the low that the under 20 age, uh, they log in their IDs and Korea system is has pursued, produced that under 20 age can't using gaming or any gaming co system after 10 p.m. Oh, really? Okay, interesting. Yeah, because right. they use a lot of time of game. Yeah, also PC Bank is the good things in Korea, but it is also bad things in Korea because it can addict it to game every time. And when Korean elementary school to high school, they finish it education system and they went, go to PC Bank or ca PC Cafe. I see. So there are regulations in place to try to um, mitigate the effects uh, of internet. Okay, thank you so much. Um, uh, we have, actually, it's, we don't have time. It is exactly one. So maybe we can start with, if you don't mind, uh, Daniel, we can start with the Saudi presentation and then we can allow questions for both Saudis and Koreans. Absolutely. Is that okay? Absolutely. Sure. Okay. So I don't know uh, who's starting on the Saudi side. Aderi uh, is our leader, so she will be telling yes. us how things will go. Yes. Hi, Doctor. I'll be starting now. Just a second. Okay. And for the Saudi team, again, whenever you'd like to switch on camera, I'm, I'm giving the advantage to everyone. So. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Adari. I'd like to welcome you to our part of the event. Um, I'm happy to be doing this again. I'll be introducing my friends and their topics. They prepared uh, interesting topics for you. Uh, Girls in Sports by Al Fahda, uh, Saudi Seasons by Ruqayya, uh, successful, successful Saudi Businesses by Al Anud, and then Tourism in Saudi Arabia by Mona and Ms. Nasra. Uh, so enjoy. Hello everyone, my name is al -Fahda. I'll be introducing girls in sports. Saudi women's sport grows by leaps and bounds. These are not cosmetic or isolated changes, but ones opening doors for the next generation of Saudi female athletes. The genuine progress we see in each field is being made at grassroots level upward and will only increase in the coming weeks, months, and years. Female representation at Sporting Federation and inside boardrooms has blossomed in line with the Vision 2030 in Saudi Arabia, slowly banishing outdated notions of women's place in sports. We're going to start off our sports segments with basketball. So in basketball, in Jeddah in 2003, the first women's basketball team in Saudi Arabia was formed by Coach Dina, co-founder of the Jeddah United Sporting Company, the final sports organization that sought to include the development of women athletes in 2006, which was the start of women in basketball. Next. Uh, we have here volleyball. The story of volleyball in Jeddah, there is a team called Blue Kickers, started with the passion of the team's founder and coach Dana. Coach Dana was alone and she was looking for people with the same interests as her in Jeddah and started building up a squad, which is now a team. Next. This is the Blue Kickers that Dana, Coach Dana formed in December 2020. The Saudi Volleyball Federation launched the kingdom's first open volleyball tournament, which did not exist before last September, at Riyadh's Princess Nuala University, with Blue Kickers, the team taking part, of course. One of the Blue Kickers' highlights was getting to play for the Ministry of Sports earlier this year in February, which was a really big thing in Saudi Arabia. In January 2000, uh, 2021, the sports minister said that female participation in sports had shot up by almost 150% since 2015. The next segment is football. 
It was only in 2017 that women were allowed inside stadiums to just watch, simply watch football. But November of last year uh, saw the launch of the 24th team Women's Football League. The, uh, the Saudi Sports Federation first announced the launch of wo the Women's Saudi Football League in February, but it was postponed with the onset of coronavirus disease. Here we have the Saudi female na national team. Next. The first Saudi female referee, Sham Al Ghamdi, is rising through the ranks. She's the first Saudi to ever become a coach, a referee. Uh, she said that she's happy to have been approved by the Saudi Football Federation, which is a first step before obtaining a FIFA license, to which hopefully she will get and be, become certified. Next. Our next sports, it's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu and kick kickboxing. The legendary Heroes Gym Club, already existent in Jeddah, organized the first women's Brazilian jiu-jitsu and kickboxing tournament to allow women to express themselves with the participation of around 40 contestants. And the, part, uh, and the championship competitions had a large audience and a broad attendance of women of various age groups. There weren't any kind of limited or restricted age groups. And this tournament is considered the first of its kind women's sports event in the kingdom. It was held under the auspices of the General Sports Authority. The next. This uh, slide we have showcasing the winners of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Kickboxing Tournament, which as I said, was held under the General Sports Authority, which was a very, very huge and important thing in women's power in society and further promoting martial arts value. We have the next slide in motor sports. In motor sports, there are the likes of rally driver Dania Aqil pushing boundaries. And only last week during the Formula E season opener at Dir'iya, the first Saudi motor sports woman driver, there is Rima Jufedi announced that she had signed for Douglas Motor Sport in the British F3 Championship. Next. Here we have Rima, who's the first female racing driver from Saudi Arabia. Now we'll end the sports segments with a conclusion by words said by the Saudi sports minister. Any change will face some resistance, whether it's women participating in sports or others. In 2015, we had zero national female teams, but today we have 23 national teams that are participating in the name of the country. We had 32 federations in 2017. Today, we have 64 federations, of which 38 of them have female board members that represent female sports within these federations. There is a lot of change, changes that have happened within ecosystem of sports, and women are empowerly rising from the ranks. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much, Fahda. I mean, information that I did not know about before, by the way. I know that uh, there are there is great uh, progress happening with women empowerment at all levels, but I did not uh, get to know all this information about sports. Thank you very much for the information. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Ruqayya, and uh, today I'll be talking about Saudi seasons. Next. Uh, so Saudi Seasons is a countrywide event that happens every year. It has many festivals, which include sports, culture, and music. These events take place in different cities. Uh, some of the cities that these festivals take place in are Riyadh, Jeddah, Sharqiya, Ta'if, Dir'iya, and Al Ula. Next. So the first season uh, that we're going to talk about today is Riyadh season. Riyadh season is an annual five-month arts and culture festival that takes place in Riyadh, which uh, is the capital of Saudi Arabia. Last year, Riyadh season hosted 7,500 events in the city. Uh, the first Riyadh season event we'll talk about is Boulevard World. It's actually a new addition to the season and it opens today. Um, each zone in Boulevard World has 10 different countries with music, architecture, and authentic food that's related to uh, that specific country. Uh, some of the countries are China, Japan, uh, next, 
France, Greece, next, Spain and Italy. So the, the second event is Riyadh Sky. It involves an award-winning Japanese cuisine restaurant called Clap. It's located at the top of uh, Majdul Tower. And this tower, it twists 135 degrees. There visitors, they can uh, get a wonderful view of Riyadh city. Next. The next event is Winter Wonderland. This is a London-based amusement park that they bring every year to uh, Riyadh season. Uh, they bring it every winter. And it has over 80 rides, the largest skating rink in the region, and much more. Next. The last Riyadh season event we'll be talking about today is Noura Riyadh, which is an annual light and art event that takes place in 40 different locations in the city. It highlights the creativity of local talent through different experiences. And this year, more than 190 artworks by 130 artists will be showcased. Next. So the next season that we're going to talk about is Jeddah season. And this festival lasted for 60 days and it consisted of nine zones. One of the zones for the event um, is the Superdome, next. So the Superdome is the largest geodesic dome in the world, and it also entered the Guinness World Records for that. Next. Um, so at the Superdome, uh, Stanley's Supercon Festival took place here, and adults and children, they could get to see their favorite Stanley superheroes. And if you don't know who Stanley is, he was an American comic book writer, editor, publisher and producer. Next. Another festival that took place at the Superdome is the Sarangai Jeddah K-pop festival. There you could taste K-street food, get band merch, and see some of the biggest names in K-pop like Everglow and Viction. Next. Next is the Summer Toy Festival. It's one of the biggest toy festivals in the world. And it had over 40 international toy brands from around the world and live shows like Transformers and Angry Birds. Next. Uh, the next season that we'll talk about is Al Ula season. Next. Uh, one event that's taking place this year is called Winter at uh, Tontura. And it's the region's longest running music and arts festival. Next. Another event that's taking place is the Ancient Kingdoms Festival. It's a 10 day event and it includes three oases, Al Ula, Khaybar, and Tema. Next. Last but not least is Shar uh, Sharqiya season, which takes place in the Eastern province of Saudi Arabia. Next. Uh, one event that's taking place there is the Color Run. And it's at the south of um, Al Khubar Corniche. Runners, they start the run dressed in all white. And at the end of the run, they're covered in the colors of the General Entertainment Authority's logo. Next. Uh, last but not least is a Sharqiya music festival. It featured performances by uh, major names at the Mom's Life Park. Uh, among the participants were Pitbull, French Montana. Akon and Amar Diab. And uh, there were also regional musicians like Asala Nasri and Hatsman al -Iraqi. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ruaya. Uh, an interesting presentation about all the events that we have in Saudi Arabia. Thank you so much. And uh, I think we're all looking forward to attending these sessions, these events. Okay, let, let's move on to businesses. Hello everyone, my name is Lanud and it's my pleasure to be part of this intercultural communication event and I'm really happy especially that I got the chance to visit South Korea uh, this year and um, for sure it became one of the best destinations. Um, it was beautiful and I enjoyed every moment there. So my topic is about examples of businesses in Saudi Arabia. Um, in different sectors that are really successful nowadays. 
we all know how successful businesses play a huge role when it comes to economy growth. And these are great examples. So I'm going to start uh, with El Majdiya residence. And it, it is uh, a real estate uh, business. They start the real estate activities more than uh, 50 years ago when they specialized in building residential villas and commercial business. Um, in addition to uh, real estate planning and investment, uh, throughout the years, they extended their projects to many regions of the kingdom, including Mecca, Al Medina, and Eastern Province, and the Riyadh, during the, which they implemented more than 13,000 residential and commercial units. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is rising, and the businesses are growing with it. It's developing, and they are working to keep up. The future vision was the motivation point for launching the uh, El Majdiya residence. In uh, 2018, they shaped their goals to focus on integrating their plans with Vision 2030. Therefore, they were uh, really excited to contribute uh, to the development uh, of the real estate market by advancing the quality and level of services and working on expanding their strategic objectives to be flexible and able to keep pace with the qualitative changes and building and facing the challenges of the market. They are proud to be uh, one of the first companies taking the initiative and uh, leap in raising uh, uh, building uh, efficiency and pursuing positive change. Also, they just launched their first international branch uh, and it is located in Manchester, UK. Departments were uh, all sold out even before they were finished. And next, please. Our next stop is food delivery applications. First, we have Jahaz. Uh, the Jahaz platform aims to connect uh, merchants, customers, and delivery partners uh, through easy-to-use mobile ap applications by providing a quick, seamless, and almost entirely uh, uh, automated end-to-end -end, uh, delivery experience. In almost five years uh, since its launch, the orders uh, delivered through Jahaz exceeded uh, 68 million. 36 million orders delivered in the first nine months in 2021. In my opinion, I think it's one of the best uh, food delivery apps because it's fast. Next, please. And uh, here we have Hunger Station. It is one of the first Saud, uh, Saudi food delivery apps in the region uh, with more than uh, 10,000 partners operating in more than 80 cities in Saudi Arabia and Bahrain. Uh, Hunger Station is the platform to order what you want while enjoying an easy and fast ordering experience. With Hunger Station, you can order from your favorite restaurants, uh, supermarkets, pharmacies, and more. And you can either choose to pay online or uh, cash on delivery. Next, please. Uh, now we have uh, transportation. Uh, Karim is a trans transportation application. Kareem was established in July 2012 um, and was acquired by uh, Uber in 2020. Kareem operates in over uh, 100 cities across 14 countries and has created more than 1 million employment uh, opportunities in the region. Next, please. So we have uh, the most uh, successful uh, cafes in Saudi Arabia. First, we have uh, Jolt Cafe. Uh, Jolt Cafe is an amazing Saudi business uh, that is really successful and it has international br uh, branches. For example, uh, for example, they have a branch in London and a branch in Marbella. Next, please. Uh, so we have uh, another successful business, uh, which is uh, Half Million. Uh, the story behind Half Million starts with Half Million Saudi Real, which was the seed money which gave birth to the well-known and beloved uh, Half Million Coffee. 
This story began in Riyadh with the support and encouragement of the local business community and the dream became uh, a reality. The drive, passion and determination did not stop at Riyadh. Instead, it took half a million to London where the first international branch uh, took place. Uh, part of the outcomes um, goes to charity and I think that's uh, really uh, amazing and thoughtful. And thank you. Thank you so much, Anud, for giving us this insightful look into all the important businesses in Saudi Arabia. Very interesting. And now let's come to the tourist areas. Hello, Anu Haseyo. I'm Mona from Prince Sultan University. I will be sharing some of the tourist areas in Saudi Arabia. Next, please. Uh, let's watch this very short video. Baby, I'm All these areas in the video in Saudi Arabia, by the way. <laughs> so, Baby, could you please go? Yes, thank you. Uh, so beside Riyadh and Mecca, Jeddah is mostly known to foreigners. So we can say it's like a second capital city. Lots of concerts and events are held there. So, But if you want to visit it, I recommend you go in winter, actually. Next, please. Uh, can you go? On? Okay. Uh, what might not be widely known is the historic Jeddah. Uh, if you're interested in historical landmarks and monuments, you can visit it. Next, please. Uh, Al Ula is an area near to Medina. It's known as a hub for modern and contemporary culture. If you're interested in rock, uh, pictographs, it's a suitable area for you. Next. Uh, away from desert nature, Abha is a place of green nature and trees. It has a really beautiful weather and natural views, as you can see in the picture. Next. Uh, in Abha, specifically Asir, there is an area up in the mountains called Rijal Alma. It contains around 60 multi-story buildings made of stone, clay, and wood. This village has historical significance as it has a number of long and old fort fortresses. Next. Next. Uh, like Abha, Attaif has a very nice weather. And what's significance in, significant in Taif uh, is its flowers. It's known as the home of world's beloved roses. Lots of factories there make beauty products out of the flowers extract. Next. Al-Baha is also known of its nice weather and beautiful nature. Next. Uh, now let's shift to another kind of nature, beach and islands. Uh, Yanbur is a great example of such nature. It's a small, calm city near to Medina. It's a suitable area for relaxing and mind freshing. As well as Umluj, it's a small island and mostly known of its very beautiful shores and mango trees. So if you're fond of mangoes like me, it's a good suggestion for you. Uh, the line is a very uh, sorry not a light sorry a light is a very small island but very beautiful as well. Adiraya, known for its traditional mud brick architecture, it's a home to the revitalized Al Buwajri, which is a pedestrianized. Uh, maze of winding always, always with the caves and craft shops, as well as the cultural sites there. Uh, Dil Ain is a small village in uh, Al-Baha. 
It's characterized by houses built from polished stones and dating, uh, and it was back to the eighth century. Uh, next. Now in the foreigner experience section, we have one of our great instructors at PSU. Uh, she came from Canada and she, had been, she has been here for 12 years. Also, it's worth mentioning that she lived in Korea for seven years. Uh, she loves traveling. She has traveled all around KSA with her family. So Ms. Nasra Aden, welcome Ms. Nasra. Would you please share your experience here in KSA? Hi, thank you. Uh, I guess I could say uh, I've been here in Saudi now for 12 years. And the beauty of this country for me is it's always shocking when I go to a new place. And I'm always very, very surprised. So if we look here at the map of Saudi, so we have Riyadh here. And I've driven about uh, 60,000 kilometers. And I'm glad my husband, you know, doesn't think I'm crazy when I say, let's get in the car and drive to the um, empty quarter, which is one of the biggest deserts. Um, so I've, we have officially finished um, the whole region of Saudi Arabia. And each area is so, so different. Um, so what I'd like to share are a couple of pictures that um, I've taken on my iPhone. So they're not professional pictures. And even on the iPhone, uh, the beauty is always surprising to me when I think, oh my God, I cannot believe there's so much uh, different terrain uh, within Saudi Arabia. I feel like every trip I get, go to, I feel like I've gone to a, a totally different country. Um, so I'll share some of the pictures um, next. So here we have, uh, if we go back, this is the Red Sea. Uh, this is my, my five-year-old in the water. And I mean, it's surreal how clear the water is. Uh, you, I just put my phone underwater and I took this picture. Um, I learned afterwards that this thing might be poisonous, so I didn't go back in that area again. But um, it's, you know, just putting, sticking my phone in the water and it's just so, so clean. And the coral is so, so bright. And I've never seen turquoise waters uh, like this before in my life. And I've traveled all over the world. Uh, next. Uh, this is my kid again. Uh, again, it's the, just the clarity of the water. And it just shows you how clean it is. It's unbelievably clean. Not a single piece of trash anywhere. And you, know, you could almost catch the fish with your hand. This here is in the... If we go to the next picture, as you can see, I make my kids take all kinds of silly photos uh, is a beach uh, in the east and you can just go there and you can camp. Uh, they have showers, they have everything. You can just set up a tent and have a picnic. Um, this part, uh, it's a bit of an inlet. So, you know, you look one way, you get the sunrise, you look the other way and you get the sunset. Uh, next. This is... Um, Farasan Islands, uh, right by Yemen. Uh, it's about an 18 hour drive from Riyadh. Um, and that whole region, like uh, they have a mangrove forest as well. And it's the cleanliness to me is just unbelievable. Clear, clear waters and great seafood uh, if you like to eat fish. Next. Uh, here you've got I, you know, what dreams are made of. Whenever I show people this picture, they say, oh, is that the Maldives? And I say, no, that's Saudi Arabia. Even my uh, young Saudi students are always surprised. They're like, no way. And I'm like, yes, um, this is um, in the Red Sea again, in the West Coast of Saudi Arabia. And I think now it's going to be part of the whole Neom region, but you get white, white sand and turquoise waters. And this one here is in a city called al -Waj. Uh, The architecture is very similar in the old city of uh, Jeddah. And they're restoring it right now. So it's becoming a heritage cultural center. Uh, next. This um, is a picture that I took, I would say, maybe 12 years ago. 
um, but now the region is being very, very developed. This is called Elephant Rock. And Mona showed a picture earlier where they have cafes um, all around it now. So it's becoming a very, very popular place to go. Next. This is the, um, I guess uh, some people call it the Petra of Saudi Arabia by the Nabataean people who came, from, they came from Jordan and they migrated down to this area. It's called Madain Saleh. And you've got a lot of rock formations and caves. Uh, it's the really, really, really interesting. I can't remember how many years ago it was. But next. This is uh, near Madain Saleh. It's called the city of Al Ula. And as someone had mentioned sports earlier, we were here, uh, we were running a 10 kilometer race through this. And this was just right before COVID. Um, and it was really neat to see like there are people that came from all over the world and within Saudi, some were running 80 kilometers and like a double marathon, 42 kilometer marathon, 10 and a 10 kilometer. So my kids and I did the uh, 10 kilometer race. Next. You'll, there's um, rock art is also found in different parts of Saudi Arabia. I know there's a region in Najran in the south, but this is uh, in, a, in a town called uh, Jubba, which is part of Hayal. And uh, this is also now a protected site. And you can see the camel. Uh, this actually was my introduction to Saudi Arabia. When I moved to Saudi Arabia, this was my housing. Um, so this is where we lived and I worked at a university there. So uh, every weekend we would just go up hiking here and uh, we'd get to see a lot of goats. So it was, the weather was fantastic. It would get to below zero. Um, so as a Canadian, um, that's my kind of weather. I'm still trying to get used to the, the heat in Riyadh. Next. Uh, this is uh, the Nafud Desert up north. Uh, and it's very, very popular to go to the desert here in Saudi. It's that you get the most beautiful sunsets and the sand dunes, like every time you go, um, they change, you know, with the wind. Um, you can go sand surfing uh, or you can go, you know, get a, it looks like a snowboard and you just uh, slide down. And uh, what, what a lot of young people like to do is um, go dune trekking with their cars. You know, they'll take their uh, four by four and drive up and down these dunes. This is Abha. Uh, Mona showed you a picture of how green it was. And you drive up this mountain and you're, you're on top of the clouds and it's, it's really cold. Uh, this is my, my poor kid again, posing for one of my million pictures. Um, we were just sitting there watching the, watching the sunset and you get a lot of baboons uh, here as well. Uh, something from the monkey family. Uh, the next picture is called the edge of the world. And that's here in Riyadh. Uh, it's about, I guess from my job here, it's about 40 minute drive. And there's some great hiking there, um, great views. And it's just the, uh, the geography is just fascinating. Uh, next, this again is going back to Abha. Um, these roads, I mean, you have to be used to mountain driving uh, to drive them. So <laughs> really switch back roads, uh, spend about an hour just on these roads going up and down the mountain. And at the edge of the mountain, there's just baboons everywhere. Next. Oh, and here's one of our baboons. Uh, we threw a banana, you know, my son, my three-year-old uh, gave a banana. He threw it at the baboon and he got very upset. And he's like, mama, he's not peeling the banana. You have to help him. He's not peeling the banana. And I had to explain to my kid, it's okay. They can eat the peel. Uh, next picture, please. And this is also still part of uh, Abha, uh, Rijal Al Ma. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous old town. And I, hadn't, I didn't even know this existed. I just went for a drive and I was like, oh, wow, look at this. Let's go see what's going on. And we stop. Next. This is still a part of the Rijal Al Ma. And I think I might have one last thing to say. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I hope you enjoyed these. These are amateur photos, so.
Thank you for Thank your you time. Thank you so much, Ms. Nasra, for sharing such a great experience. I really loved your photo shots. They look professional. They look like Getty images. They do look professional. I love yeah. them. all of them. Actually, all the pictures and the places uh, were amazing, uh, Ms. Nasra. Um, thank you very much for, um, I don't know what's happening with my camera. Yeah, okay, finally. <laughs> thank you so much for all these places and that you've been all to all these places in Saudi Arabia in the last five years. I've been here in 14 and I've been only to Riyadh. Now, mm, I need to reconsider what I'm doing. <laughs> Okay, so thank you so much, the Saudi team, and thank you, the South Korean team. And I think now we are open for questions from both teams. So you can write, as I said, if you are um, an attendee, you can write in the Q&A, or you can write in the chat box, no problem, and we'll follow up on that. Joanne, are you there? I can always pick on a couple of my students. <laughs> uh, any questions? Good time to. Ms. Nasra, whenever you have a weekend, Ms. Nasra, what is your favorite place to visit? I honestly like if it's for a short weekend trip, I like to go to the beach. It's called Uker. It's a four hour drive. Uh, so I just get in the car. It's in Hofuf area, Hassa. Oh, okay. So when we, if it's a weekend trip, uh, that's where I go. But if I have a longer trip, I like to drive to Al Waj. It's a thirteen-hour drive. I see. I see. Excellent. Um, Alanud, 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 Khalid, the business presenter the, uh, yes. on the business topic. I, I um, hey, uh, I, I thought it was really interesting. I, I know there's a lot of business going on between South Korea right now and, and Saudi with some projects. I watched a documentary the other day on, I, uh, maybe you know, have you heard? And what's your opinion on the um, the Neom city? Do you know the, it's like a 75 kilometer, it's a mega project from Saudi Arabia. It seems like it's gonna be just a city of the future. and it looks like they started work. Do you know what I'm talking about? Have you heard about this? Yes, yes. I think it's amazing. It's beautiful. Okay. It looks it looks incredible. It looks like something out of a futuristic movie. Yes, I'm um, really proud of it. What about what, what about the uh, real estate in so right now? It looks like in Canada, here in South Korea, in China, even in America, uh, price for uh, homes have just gone up, 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 up. How about the real estate market in Saudi Arabia? Is the is it kind of like the rest of the world, or is the is the cost of housing? And this is a maybe a difficult question, but is it something that Saudis can afford, or is it something that's becoming a hot issue that's not as affordable as it used to be? Uh, I think it depends on the region, and uh, it depends. So I can't really. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, no, yeah. I get it. Yeah, those are just some things. That I, oh, well, that was really neat. And uh, Rakaya? Yes. So you're saying it's a 60 day festival? Yeah, the, yeah, the Jet the one, 60 days. So now I can't imagine anybody going there for the entire time. If you had to choose one festival for the like entire year, you could only go to one festival. Like which one would you go to? From the different seasons or from Jeddah season? Well, that was kind of confusing because you say season and I think like winter, fall, summer and spring. Because but all, then it all happen around different times, but it just depends on the city. Let's just say um, any season, any city, you only get one festival. Which would it be? I would probably choose Winter Wonder uh, Winter Wonderland, which is in Riyadh, because I I've been there like three times. Um, I went last year twice, and the year before that I went once, but I still haven't finished all of the rides yet. That that so I, yeah yeah. yeah. That's uh reminds me of JJ. I've been to Jeju, but I haven't seen half of that stuff. And Nazra, yeah, the pictures are great. 
below zero, baboons, lots of vegetation. So Nazra, you see like a lot of diversity in the geography of Saudi Arabia, right? I do. I mean, and I also come from a, a geography background, right? So in my undergrad, I studied environmental science and geography. So when I came to Saudi, I just honestly just imagined it would just be desert everywhere. So when well, we get in the car and drive, it's just, it's mind boggling, you know, and we have no plan. I just, I'm like, let's just drive to the city. And my husband thinks I'm crazy, but he just goes along, you know, he doesn't say no. He's like, all right, fine. Who's driving first? And the <laughs> yeah, kids and love the water. it. You know? the, the water, water is... the water, the emerald blue, emerald green water. I've just never seen any water that clear and just, wow. Wow. Same. Great. It's just shocking to me still. Uh, Jungwon, any pictures? Jiyun, Jung Jiyun, Jung, any, any We've questions? We started to have some questions already in the Q&A. Uh, I have one question from Kylie, if I'm pronouncing it right. Mm -hmm. uh, she says, I have a question for the second presenter. I heard that K-pop is popular in Saudi, in Saudi Arabia. Which team is the most popular? Uh, from what I know, the most popular one would be Blackpink. I guess BTS as well, I guess. BTS had the largest concert in the history. I, well, like, yeah. Well, so that has to be at the top and then Blackpink. Hmm. And I think BTS was also the first um, um, group that visited Saudi, Saudi Arabia in the Riyadh season, am I right? when we first started the art season. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I guess so. And yesterday they were also, there was the singer, I guess, in the inauguration of the World Cup. So yeah, quite popular in the Gulf. Uh, all right, we have another question from Yulia. Uh, hello, the presentation from the Saudi team was amazing. Uh, I heard from the presentation that El Taif is well known for flowers. I'm curious if they have any flower festivals people can enjoy. Good question, Yulia. Yeah, I think uh, they do some festivals and such things. It's called the uh, Taif, Al Ward Al Taifi. It's well known. Okay. The flower so, festivals yeah. are real popular here in South Korea, and uh, yeah, so that that Korea that would is be such something. an amazing place as well. Mona, wait, you said you visited for uh, last year? You were in Korea? Uh, not me. It was Anud. Ah. Uh, uh, yes, Anud? it was me. How, how yes. about that trip? Where did you go when you were here? Why, why did, what was the visit for, if I may ask? Uh, I was just traveling with my family. I went to Seoul, uh, Jeju, and I think Bosan. I'm not sure if I'm, pr I'm pronouncing it right. <laughs> Those are the best places. Well, some of the good places there. Uh, we're in the uh, so Seoul, Busan, and and in Jeju. And uh, so, did you recognize any of the places in JJ's presentation? Uh, yes, uh, from uh, Jeju. <laughs> and the sports presentation was really neat to see the female sports becoming something that's popular, becoming something that's uh, common, uh, and probably go on with. I'm really curious like to hear about all, all the stuff about uh, how you've got the Uber kind of buying up. Uh, Nazra, question? Oh. Actually, I was surprised that no one presented uh, about Gangwondo because to me, I think it's one of the most beautiful regions in Korea. That's where I lived for six years. Okay. So I might be biased, but you know, uh -huh. I just was surprised no one talked about that. No. I wonder if I shot, I don't think I shot down that idea. I know that we had, we had, a, we had a couple others, but no, maybe we have that for uh, the spring, huh, Andina? If we can, <laughs> or maybe next year we can do Gangwondo. Because we're actually, Nazra, we're in Chungcheongbukdo, which is a lot like Gangwondo. So maybe because we kind of live it every day, because we're right here in the, country, in the middle of the country, away from Seoul and Busan, which is beautiful. It is beautiful. And Gangwondo, wow, that is a great place to be, to have lived. Yeah. With the mountains, the rivers, and uh, the, the ski you know, hills, the mm -hmm. the ocean. That's right. That's right. Uh, so, 
that's a that's a good topic for a future webinar. We might have to think about what topics to talk about in the future. I I, I really want to steal a couple of yours. And we'll, we'll do them from the Korean point of view. Uh, and uh, so informative, so informative. Actually, your presentations were amazing as well. Oh. <laughs> really, um, and I like a lot the use of visualization. Uh, you know, you just felt like you were really in South Korea and you could really see all the things yourselves. So it was amazing, yes. Um, we still have time for a few questions. If anybody would like to make questions or comments. Esther, hi, Esther. Esther, are you there? There's a I'll question here. Uh, okay. Esther, yes, you're right. Mm. Hi, I would like to ask, what is the most often delivered food in Saudi Arabia? Mm -hmm. And Esther might not have access to the microphone. Uh, uh, so yeah, that's a good question, Esther. Thank you very much, Esther. And everyone over there, if you cannot speak, remember the Q&A, you write the questions on the Q&A. Uh, so, Good question, and I, we can ask, um, well, Alan had the Uber or, or the DoorDash. She's talking about food. Maybe she's a good one to take this question. How about that? Yes, sure. <laughs> what would be a, some food that would be recommend, recommended by you? You mean like some good restaurants here in Nadia? Oh, what would you ask for the most often delivered? Oh, the most often delivered food. <laughs> and if my friend Nora, who I work with, has anything to say about it, it might be like a, a hamburger or <laughs> I think she's ordered. I a was of thinking hamburger as well. <laughs> probably, probably, yeah. <laughs> it's a small world. <laughs> it's a small world. Uh, yeah, there was a really fantastic presentation uh, on food last Actually, year. Actually, yeah. Oh, JJ, great to have your hand up. Do you have a question, JJ? Uh, it was actually very interesting to see the delivery application because Koreans call themselves the people of the delivery. And that's actually uh, one of our most selling uh, delivery applications. And it was really nice to know that uh, other countries also have some fast uh, ordering system ready. And I would like to try them out if I have the chance to go to your country. And it, it will be, I think it will be really, really amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Actually, since I'm uh, somebody who's using a lot of uh, delivery apps, um, one of the best things is that you have so much variety and everything is um, delivered fast. Um, so you can once have a burger, yes, but uh, other times you can have traditional Saudi food, uh, Indian food, Chinese food. I mean, all kinds of food are, um, all kinds of cuisines are, are available and uh, uh, fast delivered. So this thing, this is one of the best things also here. There's, you can choose the food you like. <laughs> well, there's a, an app that wasn't mentioned that's called Marsoul. Uh, that one's my favorite. You can send them, I, you go in the app and you say where you want something picked up and drivers will bid on it. And then you choose the cheapest bid. And so for me, it's funny uh, that I use it to, I send them to the Korean restaurant to get my kimchi for me because it's in a busy neighborhood and I don't want to drive there. So the restaurant, and they will go and pay for your stuff and add it to the bill. And then you just pay them um, on the app itself. Like you don't even have to go to the grocery store. You just say, go to the grocery store or go to the store and get me this, 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 this. And they'll bring it within half an hour. That's it. Yeah, the delivery, the delivery service is uh, um, becoming very, very popular all over the Arab world. And oh, my right. mom actually in Egypt, I'm Egyptian, for those who don't know, <laughs> my mom in Egypt doesn't like it at all because it says that it has just like, uh, um, I think Silas was saying, uh, just like the internet service that it has side effects. Uh, that people don't like they keep staying at home they don't do any go anywhere they don't exercise and so you know they don't become healthy and they keep eating food and food and food so yeah it's Dr. becoming very Dana, popular but it has its its problems as well 
Uh, Dr. Dana, mind if I interrupt? Well, uh, based on that information also that something we haven't mentioned is uh, food deliveries. We can also have uh, preparing meals for healthy options because in Saudi, we are focusing on that as well. Uh, everyone is becoming more healthier. So there are uh, programs for meal and like lunch for people who work in offices where it can deliver to their workplace. So healthy options for people who are going to the gym and want to save time and work. Yes, one of the options you can choose is, is healthy food. Oh. And then you can choose from several options. Yeah, yeah, this is true. Thank you, Fada. There is a question here uh, from Yulia again. Thank you, Yulia. Also, I would like to know why visiting Jeddah in winter would be best. Do they have any winter events there? Or is when winter just the best season to enjoy Jeddah? Actually, because it's the best season to go. Because uh, during summer, it's so hot. <laughs> it's so hot and humid. That's why. It's it, that is always nice, but it's so hot and humid in the summer. Yeah, so. even worse than Riyadh. Yeah. Because Jeddah, I think of the humidity, right? Isn't it? Mona? Yeah. It, yeah. All right. Yeah, humidity. Interesting. Okay, so that would make it a little bit. In Jeddah, because girl. Jeddah overlooks the uh, Red Sea to the west of uh, Saudi Arabia, while uh, Riyadh is in the center of Saudi Arabia, so there's no sea. Yeah, and is it? It's cooler. It's cooler towards the top. Would there be some? Is yeah. there maybe a little bit of? Okay. Uh, in the north, I think it's uh, so much cooler, especially their we, winters. We got zero degrees. Yeah. Nazra talking about zero degrees, but on in 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 the winter, I mean even evenings, uh, so it can get cool. Hopefully, yeah. I'm from Texas, so we know our heat in Texas, but I live in Korea because it's not Texas. So I like the. the well, the Saudi winters. just won the 2030 or is it 2029 Winter Games in the north in an area uh, of Tabuk. So they will have skiing, snowboarding, ice skating, ice hockey. So it does get cold up north. That's going to be an eye opener. That'll be a lot of fun to watch. And that's uh, it did not did not hear that. That's great. In 2029 Winter Games, Saudi Arabia, and I'm looking forward to that. That'll be cool. Yeah, to so see all the geography, it's a big country. It is a big country, and it's been great, Dina. Uh, I've I've enjoyed. I kind of really enjoyed today because last time I was all over the place doing too many too many things, but today I I think it was a nice little bit. The logistics were a little bit uh, nicer and. The presentations you guys were amazing from you guys always amazing yes, yes. i'm they really happy amazing. with uh, our guys over here and uh fantastic yeah. and thank so, you Julia, esther and thank you uh, uh for those questions kylie appreciate that okay so i think we come to a conclusion for this semester's session <laughs> and i already look forward to uh next event I promise you can go probably. first. I don't know if you don't mind. I, I, it was thank you for letting us go at six. Uh, uh, but uh, thank you. But that was uh, very kind. I appreciate that. And uh, definitely looking forward to the next one too, Dina. Yep. Yep. Yes, yes, I hope sure. so. <laughs> thank you so much, everyone. Really enjoyed having you all. And uh, thank you for your efforts and hard work. And have a great day or evening or afternoon. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you next semester. Inshallah. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, so everyone. Thank you. Thank you, so Thank much. you very Thank much, you Ramona. Thank you very much, Rikaya. Thank you so Thank much, you. everyone. All right. Thank All right, you. Indiana, always. <laughs> bye bye. 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 Thank you, everyone. JJ.